Does melanin rich skin actually need sunscreen or is it all just a bunch of marketing mumbo jumbo in order to get you to buy stuff that's not even going to help you out? Let's discuss because boy oh boy are there a lot of myths and misconceptions about the need for sun protection in deeper skin tones. First of all, what am I talking about with the terminology melanin rich skin? Well, exactly that. People who have deeper, darker skin tones, they have those skin tones because they have more melanin pigment in their skin. Melanin is a pigment made in our epidermis by cells called melanocytes. The darker your skin, the more melanin that your skin produces. Not only that, but the melanocytes that make that pigment, they have these little organelles called melanosomes that play a key role in pigment production. Those melanosomes and deeper skin tones, they're larger and they're spread out a lot more evenly. In comparison to paler skin types where the melanosomes are small and less well distributed. Sunscreen is actually only one part of protecting one's skin from the damaging effects of ultra violet radiation from the sun. In order to properly protect one's skin from the sun, you also need other sun protective behaviors besides just sunscreen. And these include seeking shade, wearing sun protective clothing, wearing sunglasses, wearing a broad brimmed hat, and avoiding being outdoors during midday hours when the sun's UV rays are most intense. Now, photo protection is well established to protect against sunburn, certain skin cancers, and of course, premature skin aging. However, all of that research was done primarily exclusively in people who have white skin, paler skin types, not in more melanated skin tones. When it comes to the research on sunscreen in people with melanin rich skin, there is really not a lot of research out there. A recent study actually highlighted the fact that of all of the studies published on sunscreen use, only about 4% of them included people who have melanin rich skin. Of that 4% of studies, half of those studies actually were published after 2016. I started my YouTube channel in 2016. So in other words, not that long ago. Many people just assume that deeper skin tones don't burn or they're not negatively impacted by the sun. It is true that the melanin rich epidermis of deeper skin tones does help to reduce the amount of ultraviolet radiation that accesses the skin from the sun to damage it. The collagen destroying UVA rays from the sun penetrate black skin a third of what they do white skin. UVB rays that damage DNA in our epidermis, they penetrate black skin a fourth of what they do white skin. It's estimated that in deeply pigmented skin, the epidermis has at baseline a sun protective factor, an SPF of 13.4 built in. Because of this, deeper skin tones are less likely to burn. They're also a lot more likely to tan and to develop up dark spots upon sun exposure due to differences in how pigment cells respond to UV rays. While melanin-rich skin is a lot less likely to sustain a sunburn, it does happen deeper skin tones can and do burn. And unfortunately, there is a lot less education directed towards these communities about protecting the skin from the sun to prevent sunburn, which can happen. When a deeper skin tone gets a sunburn, there isn't necessarily obvious to the eye redness. The skin instead darkens, becomes very painful, sometimes swollen, hot, and burning. Wearing sunscreen can prevent this. Not only wearing sunscreen though, but as I said, the full sun protective package. So if you're gonna be outdoors at the beach, especially somewhere like the Caribbean or really any sunny environment, right? You need to protect your skin from the sun, just like people who burn really, really easily. While people who have deeper skin tones are less likely to get a sunburn, they are a lot more likely to respond to UV rays with unwanted hyperpigmentation in the formation of dark spots or the skin condition melasma. As a matter of fact, one of the most common reasons that people with deeper skin tones visit a dermatologist is due to concerns around, it's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In other words, a dark mark left behind from some inflammatory skin issue like a bug bite, a pimple, or eczema, or melasma. Sunscreen and other sun protective behaviors are necessary to prevent this from happening and to prevent existing post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma from worsening. A lot of the research that we actually do have 
have on sunscreen in deeply pigmented skin relates to its ability to help with hyperpigmentation. Sunscreens are, of course, intended to protect against a sunburn and they protect from the damaging ultraviolet radiation rays. But when it comes to pigmentation in deeper skin tones, we recently have come to learn that it's not just the ultraviolet radiation driving the pigmentation, that's a big factor, but also sun has something called visible light that comes out of it. And turns out that is a big activator as well of hyperpigmentation, specifically in deeper skin tones. Deeper skin tones respond to this visible light with hyperpigmentation, whereas paler skin types appear not to. Most sunscreens are not formulated with the specific purpose of protecting against that visible light arm of things. Although newer sunscreen developments are being made in an effort to create ingredients that do protect against those wavelengths. For example, in Europe, they have the ingredient Trisorb. We also have come to learn though that tinted sunscreens can protect from visible light depending on how they're formulated because the iron oxides, which are non-active ingredients in tinted sunscreens, they offer some visible light protection. So if you have seen a dermatologist or you've you know read skin care information online directed at people who have deeper skin tones and are you know concerned about dark spots, hyperpigmentation, melasma, the advice is to choose a tinted sunscreen. A sunscreen will protect from ultraviolet radiation and the iron oxides imparting the tint might offer some protection against those visible light wavelengths that drive hyperpigmentation. I say might because sunscreens are not required to demonstrate that they do that. Having a tint, it's just assumed it does offer that, but I suspect there's likely a lot of variation in terms of how well any given sunscreen that is tinted protects against visible light. As a side note, makeup with iron oxides like foundations, concealers can also protect against the visible light piece of things. So already at this point, we know that yeah, you need to protect your skin from a sunburn. And if you want to protect your skin from dark spots, melasma, or prevent those conditions from worsening, you need sun protection. And sunscreen is a piece of sun protection that is established to help protect against both of those things. What about aging skin? Well, the deeper your skin tone, the slower the onset of sun-induced aging, photo aging. So our skin ages in a couple of ways, but the sun plays a big role in the formation of dark spots, aka sunspots, discoloration. In paler skin types, you'll see what are known as telangiectasias, basically dilated prominent blood vessels. And also in paler skin types, you will see prominent wrinkling. Deeper skin types will show that prominent deep wrinkling later on in life in comparison to paler skin types. But the dark spots, the hyper pigmentation can show up as a manifestation of sun-induced photoaging. Photoaging in black patients, no matter how melanin-rich their skin is, includes dark spots, an increase in skin laxity, and these little seborrheic keratoses like bumps called dermatosis papulosa nigra. Sun damage is thought to play a role in the formation of those. Check out my video on what those are and how they are treated. And protecting your skin from the sun, including wearing sunscreen, may also help to slow down photoaging aging, the formation of dark spots, hyperpigmentation, laxity, seborrheic keratoses, dermatosis papulosa nigra. But what about skin cancer? Has sunscreen been shown to protect against skin cancer in these deeper skin tones? While skin cancer is not as common in more melanin-rich skin types, it certainly happens. And you've probably heard that melanoma, while not as common in deeply pigmented skin tones, does happen. And not only does it happen, happen, but it often is diagnosed much later at a much later stage. And melanin-rich skin types who do develop melanomas are more likely to die from them. So you might assume, oh yeah, let's wear sunscreen because of that. It's not clear that sunscreen is what's going to help those patients. First of all, the melanomas that these patients do develop, which again, not as common, but do happen, they tend to happen in areas where the sun doesn't shine, like the bottoms of the feet. Is it really sun and Induced, I think we need more research to really understand the biology of the melanomas that patients with deeply pigmented skin make. And a systematic review of sunscreen use in uh, deeper skin tones done in 2020 really called into question the recommendation for sunscreen and preventing melanoma in melanin-rich skin. A lot of the research on melanoma in deeper skin tones suggests that it's not actually related to UV exposure. This study shed light 
on the fact that high-risk behaviors for melanoma that are observed in paler skin types, sunburns earlier on in lifetime, having an occupation that puts you outside in the sun all day, these are largely absent from people who have more melanin-rich skin and go on to develop melanoma. So it really seems like the melanomas that melanin-rich skin types make are not related to the sun and sunscreen likely is not what would make a difference. So if a brand is trying to use people in their advertising who have deeper skin tones and they use melanoma messaging around that, that is actually misleading. While those consumers definitely should wear sunscreen for the reasons we've already touched on up until this point, we don't actually have any research to legitimize recommending sunscreen to prevent melanoma in melanin-rich skin types. While melanoma is the deadly skin cancer that take your life, there are what are called non-melanoma skin cancers that actually are a lot more common. And they do affect people with melanin-rich skin. What are the non-melanoma skin cancers? Basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinomas in people with deeply pigmented skin do occur mostly on the head and neck and are thought to be related to sun exposure, especially in early childhood. We don't really have studies that clarify the role of sunscreen in the prevention of basal cell carcinoma, likely because this type of skin cancer is very slow growing and the damage that is needed to set the stage for a basal cell carcinoma occurs decades and decades and decades before the cancer ever shows up. So it's kind of hard to study interventions for that reason. The other non-melanoma skin cancer is squamous cell carcinoma. Now without a doubt, paler skin types, that is a sun damaged skin cancer. However, in deeper skin tones, squamous cell carcinoma often arises in the background of somebody who has a really weak immune system or they'll appear in areas like the lower leg, or maybe there is a chronic non-healing wound or some sort of scar tissue. That is usually the story in people who have melanin-rich skin who make squamous cell carcinomas. They're not usually related to sun exposure. They're not sun-induced. So as far as basal cell carcinoma, I, I think it's prudent, especially in young children, to encourage sunscreen use, perhaps for the prevention there. But like I said, we don't have clear data. The research that we do have on sunscreen and deeply pigmented skin tones, a lot of it is also focused on attitudes and perceptions around sunscreen use. And it's interesting because while in the United States, at least, black patients are maybe less likely to wear sunscreen compared to white patients, you have to be careful there because a lot of times we know that white patients, patients with paler skin types, they'll, they'll be motivated to wear sunscreen for the wrong reasons. In other words, they'll wear it and then lay out in an effort to get a tan because sunscreen does help protect against a burn, but in a paler skin type, they put it on and they use it as an excuse to lay out in the sun. They're not doing the other sun protect behaviors. They're getting a lot of sun. A lot of the research that we have also suggests that people with melanin rich skin types are maybe less inclined to engage in high risk behaviors for skin cancer too. Like they are less likely to lay out and try and get a tan and they're less likely to use a tanning bed, which are two really high risk behaviors for skin cancer. Cancer. And as far as melanin rich skin in different Asian cultures, sun protection is actually taken very seriously. And they really have a culture in many Asian countries of wearing sun protective clothing, hats, face shields, sun, uh, umbrellas. So it's a, a bigger part of their culture as well. And sunscreen is a lot more acceptable in those cultures. Let's talk about vitamin D because this is a topic that a lot of people have concerns about when it comes to sun protection, especially people who have melanin rich skin because at least here in the United States, epidemiologic studies suggest that there is a disparity in um, vitamin D deficiency with Hispanic groups and um, black patients having more vitamin D insufficiency and deficiency. And there's concern that, well, wearing sunscreen, could that exacerbate that problem or cause it? The research that we have suggests that sunscreen does not cause or worsen vitamin D deficiency. Those really well done studies though on sunscreen and vitamin D, they were done in paler skin types. However, there was a study looking between 2003 and 2006 at photoprotective behaviors, and these were not associated with a decrease in vitamin D in Hispanic and black uh, groups in the study. As a matter of fact, sunscreen use was actually associated with higher vitamin D in black patients in this study. And you know, there are multiple possible reasons to explain that. Um, reason number one is that sunscreen is not a complete shield of armor, and it blocks both UVB, which is the vitamin D producing ray, um, and UV 
UVA, which is the vitamin D destroying ray. By blocking out some of that UVA, maybe you allow the UVB that is getting through a better opportunity to make vitamin D. The other possible explanation for why sunscreen use led to a higher vitamin D in uh, these patients is that it, it merely was associated with being outside. And for example, like most people, maybe they under applied sunscreen and they really didn't have much sunscreen on to begin with and they just happen to be outside longer. So that's possible too. But as it stands now, we don't really have good research on uh, melanin rich skin types and how sunscreen use might affect their vitamin D. But the research that we do have suggests it doesn't have any negative effects. Now, there's some situations that I want to point out here where melanin rich skin types really, really, really need to be careful of their sun um, exposure and, and of protecting their skin from the sun. And that is um, if you're taking certain medications, there are a lot of medications that can make you a lot more sensitive to the sun. And as a matter of fact, a lot of patients, they end up on these medications. And for the first time in their lives, if they have a really deep skin tone, they get a sunburn and they're like, what the heck is going on? It's because a lot of medications can make you a lot more vulnerable to the sun and to getting a sunburn, specifically um, a medication called hydrochlorothiazide, which is actually a um, commonly prescribed medication for high blood pressure, which in the United States, at least a, a lot of black patients struggle with high blood pressure and are put on this. So there needs to be that education piece that if you are taking this, you've got to, you know, get on the sun protection train because you might get a sunburn. Also, um, antibiotics called tetracyclines, doxycycline can make you more inclined to burn. Certain medications called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, specifically naproxen and peroxicam can make you more sensitive to the sun and the medication amiodarone. So if you're put on any of these medications, you really need to be aware of that. Also, underlying health problems can make you more vulnerable to sun. Number one is going to be immunosuppression. If you've had any kind of organ transplant, they put you on medications to suppress your immune system to prevent it from attacking your transplant. But in doing so, it ups your sun sensitivity. We already touched on this, but obviously if you have a pigmentary skin condition like melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you have got to protect your skin, not only from ultraviolet radiation, but from visible light. It's going to be iron oxides or uh, triazorb or an opaque dressing, depending on what it is you're trying to fade. But also really, really important is certain autoimmune diseases are accompanied by photosensitivity, especially, 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 and I know a lot of you guys have this and you already know, but uh, lupus. Lupus is uh, very much a sun sensitive disease. As a matter of fact, what happens with lupus is the sun triggers release of autoantigens in the skin that your immune system attacks. So you can get a full blown flare up of your lupus just from the sunlight. So in summary, what have we learned here? Well, we've learned a few things. There are a lot of myths and misconceptions about sun and deeper skin tones. While deeper skin tones are less likely to get a sunburn, they can and do burn. So they need to be careful when they are enjoying time outdoors and rein in all the sun protective behaviors, including sunscreen. We don't have any data to back up trying to get people with deeper skin tones to wear sunscreen for melanoma prevention. So stop saying that. Unclear about the non-melanoma skin cancers, prudent to protect your skin from the sun. Vitamin D deficiency, not a lot of data on deeper skin tones, but what we do have is promising and doesn't suggest that sunscreen causes vitamin D deficiency in deeper skin tones. And while deeper skin tones might not experience the sun-induced wrinkling as early, they do develop dark spots, hyperpigmentation, sunspots, and those little seborrheic keratoses or dermatosis papulosa nigra. So for cosmetic reasons, you might pursue sunscreen to protect against that. And sunscreens actually have been shown to help improve existing sun damage on the face and deeper skin tones. So um, there is research there that I have talked about in some other videos already. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about for today's video. I hope you found this video informative, educational. Now, check out my recent video on sunscreen mistakes to avoid reasons why you might get burned when you are wearing sunscreen. Check that one out next. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.